welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will take you to the tour of Ninja Room and I will show you how we start. In this episode, I will be showing you how to start so the main engine. Guys. And In general, down, ships are commonly caused according to their gross register tonnage. That being said, the engine power needed to propel the ship is more or less in proportion with the particular tonnage. The values range from about 750 kilowatts for smaller ships up to around 35,000 to 40,000 kilowatt for very large ships. Our ship's main engine is a two-stroke main BMW with rated capacity 15,088 kilowatt, sufficient to propel a ship with gross tonnage of 82,000 tons. This is our engine control room, guys, and our hard-working chief engineer will brief us on main engine starting procedure. Once we receive this for main engine, we'll first make sure that we have enough power for it. Okay. So that means we'll make sure that we have two generators always running. First thing to do is to start up the extra generator. This is to ensure that the system has enough electrical power to handle the added load. Now starting a large ship's engine is not as simple as starting a car's engine wherein you just need to turn the key in the ignition. So now all three are on load. Car load. All three are on the bus bar. Okay. All three generators are giving power. It is a general procedure that whenever a ship prepares to leave the port, the engine is given at least one hour notice before the main engine is put on standby. This gives the engineer sufficient time to prepare the ancillary system needed for main engine operation. To make sure that the air system for the main engine, the fuel system for the main engine, the cooling system for the main engine and the lubricating oil system for the main engine are running. So <coughs> we can see now that our low oil system, cooling water system, everything is running. Fuel oil system is also running. So now there are four systems required for main engine operation: lubrication, fuel oil, cooling water, and starting air system. For lubrication, fuel oil, and cooling water system they are kept normally running even in port so we just need to verify the parameter if they are in normal range so once the propeller clearance is received from the bridge we will then proceed to the bottom platform where we will engage the main engine flywheel and then do the necessary turning Hello, it's here. Popular is clear. Okay. Okay. So now we receive the call from Priest that the pro our propeller is clear. So before proceeding to the bottom platform, I'll show you something. That we do a pre-lubrication uh, before making the turning of engine. So we in the main operating panel here. We have a pre-loop button. We have to just switch it on. This is the turning gear. So now you engage the Next is the lubrication and which is 
accomplished by turning the engine using the turning gear. This is necessary to ensure that the lubricating oil gets to cover the contact surface of all moving parts and also to pre-lubricate the cylinder liner and piston rings. After a few revolutions, the turning gear is stopped and disengaged. We do few revolutions of the rotation with the turning gear. The main idea is to see the all the piston rings and the liner are free and well lubricated and uh, the combustion space is also free from any moisture uh, or fuel, uh, unburnt fuel uh, After that we again disengage the turning gear and then we move. Next is the starting air system. The engines are commonly started by means of compressed air which is stored in large air bottles maintaining required pressure. As per SOLAS regulation, the volume of air contained in these air bottles at the full capacity should be sufficient to start the engine for 12 consecutive times without replenishment from the compressors. This compressed air is injected into cylinders and pushes down the pistons to initiate reciprocating motion which is then converted into rotary motion by crank shaft. It is very important to ensure that there is no water inside air bottle and should be drained accordingly. It's already drained now. Already drained. Okay. Subsequently, telegraph is also tested in liaison with the bridge. All tests and checks are done per company's standard checklist. Yes, air steam electric horn tried out, so we have an air horn. So already tried out by duty officer. Clock synchronized. 8028. So now for electrician we will go to steering flat. We will do all the testing of alarms and the radar equipment. Uh, we will be in contact with bridge. As a part of pre-departure, it is also important to test the steering gear, associated alarms and communication with bridge from steering gear flat. Once all the parameters are met, main engine will be ready to start. The bridge is then informed that main engine is ready for trial starting. Main engine is put on standby condition. In this instance, auxiliary blower will start and after that blow through with air will be carried out. Blow through is the injection of compressed air into the cylinders while keeping the indicator cocks open in order to release any moisture or other residues inside the cylinders. Fuel is not injected at this time so there will be no combustion. After this, the indicator cocks are closed and then engine is tried out ahead and astern by bridge. Okay, as you saw already, uh, we already did the blow through. Now we will give them the control. So, bridge will try out the main engine from bridge control.
Most shifts are designed with engine directly coupled to the propeller shaft, so reversing the rotation of the propeller means the engine needs to stop first and then reverse its rotation. Main engine is tried out to ensure that the engine controls are in good working condition to the satisfaction of engineers. Once the controls are handed over to bridge, the bridge officers will be able to start and stop the engine as needed during maneuvering and gradually increase the speed to full away. As the ship's engine is not same as car's engine, so increasing the speed should be done at the recommended time interval to avoid overloading the engine and risking the thermal shock. Also we need to comply with the bad speed range as laid down by the engine manufacturer. For our ship there is a bad speed range between 31 to 40 rpm and the engine needs to get through this as fast as possible otherwise the engine will have heavy vibrations due to torsional resonance. At full ahead the engine will be running at around 50% of load and the pressure from the exhaust gas is powerful enough to run the turbocharger at a sufficient speed so that the auxiliary blowers will no longer be needed to provide additional air flow to support combustion. Once the vessel is in open water, the vessel will increase the speed to navigational full accordingly as required. Thank <laughs> you.